and she brings out a suitcase and she's carrying a suitcase and these cards are bouncing around in the suitcase. <laughs> and she goes, I know I'm not supposed to be doing this and she opens it up and I know she was just beating the corners in on these cards and they were such nice cards. She goes, all the nice cards are gone already. I was like, what do you mean? She goes, somebody came here a month ago and pick, picked all the good cards out. This is what's left. And I said, these are good cards. Yeah. I wonder what was there before it got cleaned out. The history of sports cards goes back over 100 years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. We are here in Loveland, Colorado on a adventure, looking for more sports cards, and I'm super excited because I have two awesome young dudes with me. My second oldest son, Kai, and Mercer Coleman, who is the son of Matt Coleman, the guy behind all the magic. Are you excited about this trip? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're here at Canyon Collectibles in Loveland, Colorado, looking for sports cards, and sometimes you hit, sometimes you don't. Uh, but this place is super cool. I, uh, the kids are loving it. They're finding little things they want to take home. Nothing too great from the sports car world, but we'll keep digging. Oh, Michael Jordan candy. Oh, oh look at this, the Romeo <laughs> Tapia. The Colorado Rockies. Look at all this amazing fishing gear. I mean, look at this stuff. This is incredible. Carl, remember, you promised me a fishing trip, episode two. I'm gonna hold you to that. Next time we're gonna go fly fishing. Yes. You teach me how to fly fish, I'll grade your cards okay. for you. I'm getting this for me. I'm totally bringing this home. We have about 80 chickens at home right now, and my wife's addicted to chickens, so. So we are here in Loveland and we're going to see Donald who we connected with on Facebook Marketplace. We got so excited that we booked a trip to Denver to make this work. And so we're about 15 minutes out from this house now. It's a good mix of vintage, a little bit of semi-modern stuff, but a lot of vintage. Donald seems like a great guy. He held it off for us for a couple weeks. So I'm hoping we can make this work. Yeah. You do. Nice to meet you guys. I got the crew with me today. Hey, come this on is in. Kai. This is Mercer. This is my collection. This is a uh, this is a little different than what you guys uh, yeah you know had uh, reached out to me about. But uh, this is just a wide um, span of years. I think we got stuff all the way from um, some play ball stuff. Yeah. Uh, back over here, uh, I really like the play ball stuff from the. I think that's yep. 40 or 39. So this collection, again, priced at $5,500. I was comfortable with that looking at pictures, but as I looked at the conditions closer, I feel like 5,500 is a little overpriced. I got back into collecting like uh, 10, 12 years ago and I kind of did my thing and got my fix. And now I just want to pass them on to the next person who can enjoy them. And, you know, baseball cards are kind of like that thing that can be passed on and more than one person can enjoy them. And, and, and if they're kept in, you know, in these preserved in the right way, I mean, they kept for a long time. Why would you not pass them down inside the family? Do your kids not have any interest or you just... Not too much. I'd rather use the money to do some, you know, some traveling with them and yeah. build some memories that way. Um, maybe buy an RV and, and go camping and hunting in it. and. You were at 55 here. I'm probably closer to four on, 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 on the ladies' lot. And I'd feel comfortable at three on your lot. Okay. So seven, seven grand in cash is what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'll do, I'll do eight bottom dollar. It's all yours. We can do that. Okay. Got a deal, man. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. This has been good. So Casey's a prime example of what we see a lot of now younger generation of collectors, moved into the middle age, collected a lot, started focusing on certain vintage cards, and now realize they wanna bring those collections back out and sell them because yes, they have more disposable income, but they wanna use that disposable income for their family. He wants to go take them on vacation. He wants to buy an RV. 
things that are very helpful and beneficial to his family, he wants to turn these cards into those types of assets. Me and my wife have been married 16 years and we got four kids, but when I came out here in 2004, I was, yeah. uh, I was a drug addict, alcoholic. I had two trash bags full of clothes and a bag mm -hmm. of pot in my pocket. Met a guy, as soon as I came out here, he said that uh, you could have a new life, you mm -hmm. give your life to the Lord and, and uh, you could be delivered from all those things that are weighing you down. And I listened to him and I <laughs> obeyed the Lord and got baptized and God gave me his spirit and he's given me everything that I have. I, I sold a prosperous business a couple of years ago. I was making like $500,000 a year cutting trees mm -hmm. and I sold it and wanted to spend more time with my family. But, you know, I didn't know anything when I came out here. All I knew how to do was wash dishes and cook food. Yeah. And God gave me a trade and gave me a family and gave me a church family and gives me good things, you know, like sports cards and stuff yeah. things to enjoy. and. You know, and I just want to pass it on to other people and, you know, and give God glory for all he's done. And I know he'll bring new things into my life. So, yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Amen. I love it. What an incredible story, though, right? A guy who came from nothing, who was down in the depths, the pit of despair, took a leap of faith and met somebody who transformed his life, met somebody eternal. Such an incredible story. Thank you it's, so much for having us out, seriously. It's been real cool. Yeah, so yeah. I'm make it work. Yeah, everything went good. Um, you guys are super nice, and uh, you guys have a love and passion for baseball cards, and that makes me excited to pass them on to you guys so that you guys can pass them on to the, whoever they're going to go to in the future. And It was really great to have the boys come along for this particular collection because there was so much variety. Things like the Jerry Rice rookie who Kai gravitated towards and said, I like that Jerry Rice card. And I'm like, hey, that's his rookie. It was great, right? You get to experience them seeing cards for the first time. Even Mercer picked up a couple Clementes and said he's adding those to his personal collection. So I'm really glad that they saw a collection that had a lot of variety in it. Quick question for you. Do any of your dealers sell sports cards or baseball cards? We don't really have any dealers that sell this kind of stuff, no. Hello, we are not available now. Do you know if any of your dealers sell sports cards or maybe have baseball cards and things like that? I know for a fact there's a couple in there. What's up guys, find some stuff? Oh yeah, we found some pretty good first edition cards. First edition Pokemon? Yes, first edition Pokemon cards. I would start finding like stacks of cards that you want because you can get it for two bucks and eight bucks. You already looked at that one online, right? What was yeah, it selling it for? Like, it could be 20 bucks, maybe okay. eight to 20. We'll find a stack and then we'll go up to the front and dealers will sometimes package things up for you and give you a, a discount if you buy more. Some of it's really good stuff, a lot of it's overpriced because people are paying a high price to rent these, but a lot of times you find a case like this where you have rows of just singles that you never know, right? You spend a few minutes and dig through them and you can find some good stuff. But I mean, this is the, the most glass cases I've ever seen in an antique mall, this is crazy. All right, so some of these guys will sell cards that are reprints, but you know, this guy in particular does a good job of letting you know it's a reprint, the cards on back show a reprint. I mean, you, for anyone that sees cards enough, you know pretty quickly, but it's important for the dealer to note that this is a reprint and they do a good job of that here, so that's good. All right, so we're wrapping up here at the Brass Armadillo and look, we didn't walk out with a lot of sports cards. That's okay, you run that risk when you come to these large antique malls, but it was a great experience. The boys walked away with some Pokemon stuff. They were checking the values and they found a couple really good opportunities for them to grab some first edition Pokemons. And it's just a great environment. We couldn't be more pleased to spend a couple hours here at the Brass Armadillo. All right, so day after collection purchase with Casey, and after you get a chance to process things and figure out what you actually purchased, sometimes you're really happy and sometimes you're not really happy. And I would say I'm right in the middle after this collection purchase. Not necessarily a great buy on our end. We got a, a stack of a lot of cards we're gonna grade from Hall of Famers. We got some really obscure stuff that I'll show you here in a second from the early 50s. And then we have some modern stuff, you know, mid-modern stuff that I think might end up being pretty good. And then everything in between, you can see everything around the room here from junk wax to 
uh, things that we're trying to figure out. But I paid $8,000 for the collection and at the end of the day, I'm, I'm probably not gonna come out with a huge lead, but ultimately I'm pretty content with this because after you grade cards and you connect them with collectors, I think it'll be okay. So let me show you a couple things about this collection that stood out to me. One, I mentioned the obscure cards. You know, a lot of stuff from the early 50s that we had to really dig around on. You know, presidential cards, Andrew Johnson there. We have some play ball stuff here. You know, cards that you've seen in other videos that we've done. Here's one that we did not figure out, but I would love for you to see. And question for you watching, what year do you think this General Ulysses S. Grant card was made? Cards that average over $100 with a PSA 1 or an SGC 1, we tend to always grade. So while we're packing these cards up, there was a couple other great, great cards. The 1956 Topps Willie Mays, and then a 1954 Al K-Line Rookie. Both of these are gonna come back in SGC 1, and that's totally fine. Garage sale hunting. Chasing cardboard garage sales. We are finagling here, man. We're working our way through the, the neighborhoods. Oh, here we go, this one. You're trying to figure out how to spend this money, aren't you? It's a lot of money. It's, it's burning their holders they're like, we gotta go, we gotta go do this. You guys good? Thank you guys. All right, so we are headed to see Aaron, uh, another contact that we, we were able to track down on Facebook Marketplace. We didn't think it was gonna work out and then we had a conversation with him yesterday and spun up this potential of us coming out today. And so here we are, it is late on a Saturday evening and I think we have an opportunity here to come see Aaron. So it's a little bit of a unique situation. Aaron is moving away, he's moving to Mexico, has a massive, massive collection. And we're gonna go see if we can help kind of sort through some things, walk away with a couple Pelican cases full of, of graded cards and, and all this random stuff that he has. I don't know. It seems like maybe a, a stretch right now, but I think we might be able to come to terms on at least something to help him out and, and also help us out. All right, so we are one minute away after a three hour adventure trying to meet up with Aaron. We're getting ready to pull into his driveway. Another adventure, here we go. Uh, there's lots of good stuff here. I mean, there's lots of good stuff. If I lived, lived remotely close, we would probably figure out a way to make life easy for Aaron, but I don't live remotely close. All right, so if you're building sets, we're going from basically 78 all the way to 1995. And these are in pristine condition because they put them in great boxes. 30 years later and you pull these cards out and they look like PSA 10s or as Aaron would say, PSA 11s. PSA so. 11s. After a long night of negotiating, we were able to walk out with a stack of cards. Some of the highlights include a 2018 Optic Fast Break Michael Porter Jr. purchased for $10 going straight to my personal collection. A 2010 Panini South African Ronaldo. A poor grade, but for $15 it was a significant card and I don't have a lot of Ronaldos so I wanted to get more. A 1960 Topps Jim Brown, another card that I already own, but the price was attractive enough for a PSA 4 purchased for $60, probably valued around $150. A 1992 Action Pack Deion Sanders Orange Parallel. This in a PSA 10 is commonly overlooked. For Deion Sanders collectors, the Jim Mint version of this parallel can fetch $150 plus. I got it for $25. A 
1964 Topps Giants Frank Robinson PSA 8. A PSA 8 of a 1964 card for a Hall of Famer? I'll take it. A 1901 Ogden Lord Byron. It's a popular English poet. I did have to Wikipedia that one, though. 1955 Gene Simmons. How could I say no to this card? Gene Simmons, Spartacus, $15. Done deal. Four and a half hours hanging with our boy, Aaron, from Denver. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. We dropped 1500 with you tonight. Yes, sir. You just wouldn't let us leave. I you was kept giving us more. underpaid. You were, you were. Just kidding. Thank you for letting us dig through this. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did this trip go as planned? No. Did we run into lots of hurdles throughout the weekend? Yep. But was this trip a success? I think so. The boys hung in there for the long night, and they got a small taste of what chasing cardboard is all about. The journey to chase cardboard is keeping us on our toes, and we're absolutely fine with that. Keep chasing. Keep chasing.